My name is Todd Bailey and uh, my wife and I, Marion Hester, uh, live here in uh, Gordon Township and uh, we're completely off grid here, three quarters of a mile to uh, the nearest hydro lines. The cost was prohibitive to bring the hydro in so we decided to put a solar system in. It's all on adjustable racking. We have 5300 watts of solar panels. It's in five strings and uh, there's 20 panels of 265 watts apiece. At this time of the year you have two pins, one here and one on the other side. And they just pull out. In the winter time you take it up to 60 degrees and you put your pins in through these holes. And then right now at this time of the year, if I chose to, I could take it right down to 30 degrees. The reason I, I don't go all the way down to 30 is just simply because I over spec the panels and the panels stay cleaner if they're at a little more angle. Any kind of rain or anything like that helps wash it off. I leave them at the 60 degree angle longer than the best solar return because of our winter here lasts a little bit longer and the snow goes off it when it's more straight up and down better. So Originally I built this building I was going to put the solar panels on top of that but just at the time I was doing it the electrical code changed and the panels have to have rodent proof enclosure all around that they can't get to it anywhere and I was worried if I put it on the roof with our Canadian winters or Northern Ontario winters the snow and ice load that would build up behind it because I would have to have the top of it enclosed as well uh, I thought it might cause me some grief on my roof so I decided I moved it down here and put the spent pad on the adjustable panel on the adjustable racking which was probably the best choice anyways because it's much easier to maintain keep the snow off in the winter and it gives me the option to uh, move them and get a little more power in the winter see there's five different sets of wires coming in so there's four four panels to a string each one each four panels is on its own individual racking then it, your combiner box the new regulations for that it has to be a single disconnect so you can shut the power off completely from one point on your combiner box so all the power this is all dc power coming in it comes into the combiner box and it goes into two wires from there the box comes over and comes into the inside into where all the batteries are things we'll show that in a second and then the main feed comes back out and goes over to the house and then another feed goes over to uh, the generator shed. I use a gas generator. A lot of people ask me why I don't use a propane generator considering that we're heating with propane. Um, my experience with propane generators is that they don't work very well once you get below minus 30. When it's at the coldest time of the year I need my generator to work. I've never had it required to run for my batteries until the month of November. Usually the first week of November it comes on and the last week or two of January will be the last of the run. I use uh, about, it varies on the year of course, but usually about 25 jerry cans, uh, 20 liter jerry cans over those three months. These are the signal wires that come from inside that have it set so that once it gets below 55% depth of discharge, the generator automatically comes on. With the lead acid batteries, you can go down to 75%, but I want to give myself a little breathing room if something happens that the generator doesn't start. I have some time while I still have some battery capacity to run my place to do whatever I need to do to start the generator. It uses 3,500 watts when it's charging at maximum. Mm -hmm. um, there's about 10 or 15% loss from charging to actually what goes into the batteries. So you get about 3,150 watts that actually goes to the batteries, but the charger self draws 3,500 watts. And this is a 7,000 peak in about 5,500 continuous. So there's enough extra here that will run the, gener or the generator portion at maximum and do everything we need to do in the house at the same time so we'll run both systems completely so and that also has an idle down feature so that when you're not using it it, uh, it idles down and uses less fuel so when you're looking after yourself then you want things to work you want redundancy right the garage is a bit of a catch-all right now we have a, a full size freezer that runs electric freezer it runs off the solar system as well then all the lighting and all this lighting on both levels um, I run all my power tools and everything. I'm a carpenter, but I can run anything I want off of. Basically, like I got a welder that I run, like a MIG welder and things. You wouldn't be able to run a full-size stick welder, but you can no problem running a MIG on it. And this is the, everything's in here for the solar. This is where it said the power comes in, comes up into here, that goes into the charge controller. So the charge controller takes, there's like 130 volts. Actually, I'll show you right here. Right there, 
2.1 kilowatts of power right now. It only shows the power of what the batteries are actually using, so if they're charged, so the, the batteries are at 60 volts, they're taking 35 amps. Right now there's 129 volts coming, that's what the panel is producing, and we're making 2100 watts of power. It'll make 5300 under perfect conditions. When you first put these in, you can sit here and watch these numbers for hours. It seems like you're just so interested in it and you just want to see what it's doing all the time. So then the power comes from the charge controller and it goes up into the bottom into the fuse panel portion of the inverter. This is the inverter charger here. And this is all the fuse panel portion of it. All the connections are made into here. And so then the power goes from there. Down comes these two cords. Go down and charge the batteries. And this is the vent I was talking about and that's the fan that runs it. To discharge the hydrogen gas. What I have is a 48 volt system. I have two strings. These are six volt batteries. So there's eight batteries here and eight batteries there. So there's 48 volts on each side. They're putting uh, parallel. So and uh, I have 40,000 watts of battery capacity. We have big screen TV, computers, laptops, uh, electric fridge inside. We have a coffee maker, microwave, toaster. We have a washer and dryer, and the dryer is propane heated, but electric or electrical to run the, the drum and everything. Our kitchen stove is gas. Our hot water is hot water and demand propane. But uh, everything else runs off of uh, off the electricity. Like I said, we've got the, that. And we also have a, a full water treatment system for the house. One thing that I overlooked on my design criteria, I never thought about the UV light because it's a 40 watt light and it runs 24 hours a day. So that takes a K a day run your UV. So that's something to think about if anybody's considering it. It um, never even occurred to me at the time when I did the design of it, but I over designed a little bit so and it's something else I suggest is over designed by about 25 or 30 percent because there's always something you want to add after. And the other thing I would just recommend to people it's I went with the, the two strings of batteries in parallel because it was the most economical to get the 40,000 K but I really wish now that I had gone with a single string of bigger batteries and because it's hard to keep both sides balanced because if one side one battery bank gets weaker than the other one all the one the stronger one will do all the work and i have a, a multimeter down there that'll and you got to get one that'll check dc and you can actually put it around your wires to tell you how much amperage they're drawing and this set of batteries does about two-thirds of the work to this one and they always take more water everything and I have checked all my resistances, I've checked everything, all the voltage, all the, I've done all the, everything that you can do to try and figure out where it is and change my points and uh, I still end up with this out of balance where the efficient would be more, it would be just be more efficient if it was a single bank. So I wish now I had to spend, it would have cost about 40% more for the batteries to go on with the single batteries because you get up into a higher grade of battery to do it. You got to water your batteries, you bring them up all the time. I water them about once a month. Then you have a tester and it gives you a specific gravity. So when you have the specific gravity, you got to, you want all the batteries to be at the same specific gravity. That means they're all sitting at the same state all the time. And once they get out of wax, they're not balanced anymore, then you have to do what's called equalize. And you can equalize right off of here or through the panel. And what it does is it increases the voltage, lowers the amperage, puts more voltage into the batteries, and desulfates the batteries, the, the plates inside the batteries. And it's the there's different there's different thoughts of how long you should do it. But usually it's a 48 volt system, so usually it's about 63 volts. And I I got my equalization set to do two and a half hours. They say up to four hours, but I prefer to do two and a half leave them for two or three days, check my specific gravities, if it's still down, then I'll do it again, rather than do four hours, because it's, you know, you're putting the batteries under an ideal condition to do that, to, to bring them back. So I prefer not to do it any more than I have to, and it's all part of the maintenance. I mean, I know lithium ion is really coming on, and when I got into the system, that was five years ago when I put the system in, these are supposed to last. Oh, 9 to 15 years depending on how hard you use them and, and how well you maintain them. I should get I hope 10 or 12 years out of it and uh, by that time I hope lithium ion will have come down enough in price because there's zero maintenance, 100% discharge there's just, you can't hurt them and, uh, and the new lithium ion 
4,500 cycles at half discharge and no degradation at all. So then the power from that comes back into the inverter and then so the inverter changes it to 230 volt and this inverter will put out 4,400 watts continuous up to 6,000 for 20 seconds and up to 8,000 for five seconds or something like that. So it does everything we want to do and then it feeds back into the panel. Everything in here is fed most to the panel and then uh, the power goes back out and goes to the house as well and feeds the house and we've got a sub panel in the house. So it doesn't matter where I am as long as I have cellular service I can check the status of my batteries and check the status of my charging everything right on my on my cell phone or on my computer. This is the auto generator start which you do your settings through here so that's where I set the 55% depth of discharge and they have to be at that level for 15 minutes I think because Say if you turn on the toaster or something, or the coffee maker, it puts a heavy draw. Maybe you put both of them on at the same time, throw the microwave on, it puts a heavy draw and it would drop it. But I think it has to be for 15 or 20 minutes. And then the automatic generator start will kick on and start the generator. And it'll come on and then it'll run through the bulk and absorb and everything cycles on that. So it runs about, once the batteries get down about that level, it takes about seven hours. Generator runs for about seven hours to bring everything back up. Because you got to put, uh, you get that you're, you got to put about 22 or 23 thousand watts back into the batteries, and so you're getting 3100 watts approximately, in, and then it gets less and less as it gets to the end. So that's what it takes to get it up. I also you can put a setting in here that I have it I have it run for an hour and a half every morning now. During November and December and half of January, I had it set like that. On top of it, automatically comes on for once it gets down too low, but I have it set, uh, Marion does uh, laundry every morning around 9 o'clock, so I have it set that it comes on at quarter to 9 and runs till quarter after 10 every day for that time, so that when she's doing it, the generator, while it's running, it might as well be doing that load at the time, and it gives the batteries, it brings the batteries up at a bulk to absorb, so that the power, by that time the sunlight's getting onto the panels fully at that time of the year, so they get the most effectiveness from them to charge the batteries at the same time. And it seemed to work really well. Kept my batteries in really good shape all the time and uh, I didn't get as much fluctuation. I went with the whole Magnum system, but uh, I mean, there's, there's lots of there's lots of good solar brands out there. It's just that this one, I liked everything to being from the same company and it, uh, it works well. I, I've never had any trouble with it. Hey everybody, I'm Forrest the Filmmaker, the person behind the video that you just watched. If you enjoyed that and want to check out more alternative dwellings, we have a playlist popping up that is all the episodes that we've ever done. There's van tours, tiny home tours, sailboats, off-grid, uh, garden tours, all sorts of cool stuff, so check that out. We also uh, release new episodes every single Monday at 8.30 Eastern Time, and that's in the morning. And if you want to check out some curated things that I've done and some movies that I've actually made, you can check out a link below to Prime Video and you can check out the reality of hashtag van life, best friends, moments, and curated alternative dwellings. So check that out. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode.